for what you like about that seed. And yours will be different, you know. Your how and cucumber, uh, I think that might be a hybrid though, actually. Your, um, you know, uh, sun gold tomato that you let happen in your garden, you'll select for what you like about it, you know. Um, your Castata Romanesca, maybe you found a couple plants that were a little bit more visible or a little smaller, and you'll select for that. So you'll have a land race that's different. And that's what a land, that's the term land race. That's, what, that, that's another one of those terms, you know. Um, and so in Silo, Troy's Greenhouse, actually, have you ever heard of Mr. Stripey Tomato? It's one of the yellow pink ones. That was saved and brought back into the seed trade by Troy's Greenhouse. And indeed, this year coming up, I'm going to get seed from Wade that he just got from a family that had the original one that was brought to the area. It's going to be different, we assume, than the one that Wade introduced to the that Wade's dad, Troy, introduced to the seed industry. Because that family saved it isolated from all the other ones. And so I might have a real good example this year. I can grow the Mr. Stripey that you can buy, and I can grow the one that was saved for 40, 50 years by this family in a cove in Yancey County. You know? And that will be an example. That's the, that's the land race, and then there's the one that's in the, in the trade. What um, Kent Wheelie said about the commerce of, of, of heirlooms is that's what Seed Savers. Does everybody know about Seed Savers organization? If you, if you don't, just punch in Seed Savers. It'll pop up. And what he said was they considered themselves successful when seed that they were saving re-entered the commercial market. Because that assures viability. Then there's an economic incentive to keep it going. Otherwise, you're depending on volunteers. Fortunately, there are a lot of passionate volunteers, so a lot of seed is being saved. And new things are being discovered all the time. People are realizing that they're... I just heard about Hampton Turnips. Bob Wells is working on a biochar project with us down here, and he's from the Cape. And they have a turnip there that takes all kinds of deep cold, like 10 degrees and stuff like that, doesn't die, freezes and thaws, doesn't have a tender texture, right? But is incredibly sweet, and he just grew one that was 30 pounds. And like, you know, people ship them to their kids for Thanksgiving. It's just like this tradition. He says, I don't know, I've given seed to people that don't live here and they don't grow them very well, but I'll send you seed and try, and I'm going to try and grow the Hampton turnip, you know? That's just off the radar. Nobody's talking about Hampton turnip. It's a whole... Little niche, a whole niche of genetics. You know? I went way, on way too long because it's an area of fascination. But people get open pollinated now. All right, seed saving. You can save your own seed. Okay, you can save your own seed and use it here. A few quick tips. We're gonna have seed saving workshops. A few quick tips. Okay, tomatoes are some of the easiest seeds to save. Only a few, like Cherokee purple, need isolation. Cherokee purple tomato. Um, yellow onulo and green onulo crescent beans and a few other plants that normally are self-fertile and can be easily saved without without isolating them they happen to have different shaped flowers than most of their co co-species you know um, like provider bean or something like that provider bean has a completely self-fertile flower very few insects can ever get in it so Provider beans are very true to type, even if there's other beans growing around it. If you grow yellow annual near providers, you'll get provider characteristics in your yellow annual. If you grow, and I did this one time, I saved Cherokee Purple from the Mountaineer Community Garden where every kind of tomato in the world was growing. Every different plant, every plant that came up was totally different. I saw sun glow characteristics, um, you know, yellow pink characteristics or Mr. Stripey characteristics, green ze zebra characteristics, all of them in the Cherokee purple. Why? Because they have much bigger, more open flowers, as do most of the potato leaf um, tomatoes. The term that I love, which is not a widely known term, but I'm looking to get, see, it, see it accepted, I got from Lee Barnes, a great seed saver around here. He calls those kinds of usually self-fertile flowers promiscuous. <laughs> My friend Yana Fishman said, where'd that term come from and is that a, a proper term? I said, no, but I'm working on it. <laughs> um, and so, know that there are exceptions and there are promiscuous varieties even within self-fertile families. But beans, peas, tomatoes, and lettuce. Lettuce I don't get because it's a composite. 
But for some reason, they come. They all come true to see. You have to work to get them to cross. You know? um, squash, brassicas, those guys will cross like they're going out of style. You know, so you need to do the distances. Um, a resource I didn't give you because this isn't about seed saving, but I highly recommend. And actually, I should have had it on there because she, her new version gives you the specs for how to germinate them and what they need to start. Is Susan Ashworth's Seed to Seed. And you can look up any vegetable in there and she'll tell you who else is in the family. Like turnips and a lot of the Asian greens are in the same family, Rapa, of the brassicas. And they'll cross with each other. So you have to be careful not to save seed from two rapa brassicas in the same area. You're going to have to have probably a half mile or more. You know, so they're very hard for home growers to do unless you use something like floating row cover to isolate them. You know? And then you go, but they won't be pollinated. You know, My experience is that very often pollination happens underneath floating row cover. But it's much more control. What happens is there's some bug that's on the ground that crawls up and gets in those flowers and does it. But it only gets in those flowers. It doesn't get outside and pick up some stray pollen. So that's one way. And with things like um, squash, you actually, the night before, you tape a female flower shut and you tape a male flower shut. The next day you come out, you open them both up and you put the pollen on the female flower and then tape it shut again. And then you can do it. you got control. And you don't need a half mile or a mile. And indeed, what a project for kids, right? you got grandkids, neighbors, whatever. You know, you can do that with them and they'll just be totally entranced. You know, and they, they'll just be dying to see how the outcome comes. You can do crosses and things like that. I mean, you know, get into it. It could be a lot of fun. Finally, seed catalogs. Okay. Uh, I must have left Johnny's up. With the, but does anybody not know Johnny's? What are those seed catalogs right there, Greg? Can you grab those and hand them down? Um, Fedco Seed is my absolute favorite. Um, Johnny Selected Seed is a close second. Baker Creek Seeds is the go-to seed catalog for squash varieties, especially winter squash varieties. What I love about it in particular is that if you're plagued by vine borers, you can most easily avoid the problem of vine borers by growing the Machata squash family. That's the butternut family, or the Mixta family, which is the Kushaw family. There's also people and Maxima and one other one, which I'm forgetting right now. But there's a bunch of families of squash. Most of them are susceptible to vine borers, but Machada and Mixta are not. There just aren't enough of those varieties around. Most catalogs just carry butternut or one other Machada. Baker's Creek might have 10 or 15. You know? So it's a great mix. Um, Peaceful Valley Farm Supply has got a great selection of organic seed. Um, Territorial has a great selection of seeds. They um, also have the only winter seed catalog I know. If you're a customer of theirs, they'll send you a winter catalog, which is pretty impressive um, because winter gardening is, a, is the future for us. We don't need to can a lot of our food. We can have fresh food in the winter. Um, seed Savers Exchange is a great catalog to look at. They have some great varieties. And they're doing real important work. Seeds of Change is an organic one, organic seed source that hopefully has improved. The last time I bought from them, they um, took my order and didn't have a whole bunch of stuff in stock because I ordered in early December and they didn't expect orders to start. You know, they sent the catalog in November. I ordered in December. I wanted a lot of different onions. I wanted to start right away. They sent them one packet at a time and charged me shipping each time. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I should have complained, but it was just like I just got burned and stay away. Just let them know if you order from them that you want them to ship cost effectively, you know, or contact you and let you decide if you should ship, you know, a whole lot. The, uh, you, their seeds come in plastic or uh -huh. the little packages. Yeah, that, kind of a luminized plastic. That, uh, that, sewing Millions project. I managed yeah. to get in on that, and they sent me like thirty packets of seeds. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all little plastic things. You said plastic's not a good way to store stuff. Well, no. That, that's actually better than paper. Paper's even more permeable. Okay. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know. I mean, plastic's not bad in and of itself. It's just inferior to glass. Okay? Okay. There, now, my... And so they're actually giving you a better product, but I question the sustainability of that. Yeah. I mean, we're all getting by pretty well with paper seed packs. You know? Mm -hmm. that's and, alumini and aluminized plastic is... Uh,
Right, so that's what they're sending. So that's actually very good. That way, the problem is it's not very recyclable. I guess if you then save it for other seeds, it could be a plus. But if you buy from them all the time, you're eventually going to... But then you could share them with me, I guess. I mean, I guess it could be okay, you know. I don't want this one to do an organic, you know. I just got to warn you to be careful as, as far as ordering from them. So True seemed to be... So good. True is a, is, a, is a fine company. Um, I don't buy anything from them because their prices are really aimed at retail. And they don't, they're not competitive for um, for me, for buying, you know, for commercial. But I highly recommend supporting them for local, for, for home gardens and stuff. Do you um, plant all the seeds you buy? No. What do you do with the seeds you don't plant? I, um, this, um, Bob Cabinet of Seeds, yeah. if you feel it, it's cold. We keep it in the fridge. Okay. okay. And they last quite a long time. There are some seeds that, that are exceptions to that. Onion seed, parsnip seed, Parsley seed. Um, a lot of the a lot of the um, APACA used to be called Umbelliferae are very short lived. Spinach seed. Those guys are very short lived. That doesn't mean you can't use them for a year or two, but it means you got to watch their germination and you have to take very good care of them. If you don't take good care or mosh, that's another one. If you don't take good care of those seeds, they will be they will be bad within a year. You know, most seeds just not kept in the greenhouse, not kept in your car, are good for a year or two. A year or two. Some are good for much more. Squash seed can last peppers, a long, long time. Peppers? peppers can last a good long while. But if you're yeah. keeping them in a the freezer and keeping them well... Indefinite. Years. Okay. Maybe decades. I mean, absolutely. Yellow crescent bean. Um, Cook's Garden used to carry it, right? Yellow annula. Um, they eventually went to carrying mixed yellow and green because they couldn't get them not to cross and before they did that I had saved seed okay I had saved a nice little jar of it when I saw that they no, never no longer had yellow crescent I didn't need it anymore because I wasn't growing for um, the Highland Lake Inn right or, yeah well actually it was I was coming towards the end of growing for the Highland Lake Inn and I wasn't as focused on, on it so like the last year or two I didn't grow for them but I stuck the seed that I saved in the freezer and I found it 13 years later, last summer. And I put it out. I put it out with the kids in the Terra program. And I told them it was 13 years old. It was as old as they were, right? Or older than some of them, right? Mm -hmm. And they were just utterly entranced. And they took some home and tried them. And I hope to hear from them and see how they did. I'd say I had probably 60 to 70% germination kept in the freezer, you know? Yep. Now, this is just the way the word world works, right? I thought I have this gift because you can't find it anymore, and it's still described actually in seed savers. I noticed they now have it, of course, and they say it's almost extinct. It's so rare, mm. so I'm like, it's still great, right? And then there's a company called Seeds of Italy that just got bought by Growing for Market newsletter, um, and they are making it more widely available, and they of course have it from Italy. Mm. So this great thing that I was going to introduce, <laughs> and I've done all this important work and saved all this seed, it's not as important anymore. But I still will. It's almost extinct, so I'm still going to produce it and get it out there. It's a really neat Romano-flavored yellow crescent bean. Chefs love it because it's really pretty on the oh, right. plate, you know. Um, and so the freeze, that's a perfect example. Also, uh, my partner Diane one time was um, doing um, landscaping for a person in California who had been from England, and she brought seed, tomato seed from England with her 20 years before. And just had kept it in a cool room, not even refrigerated. And she had a packet of it, and one seed was still good. Hmm. So you, they could keep it. And indeed, Wade's got stories like that of an heirloom that they were trying to, and somebody found it, you know, and there was like, you know, they got two plants out of a hundred or something. Sure. You know?